Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture series in bioenergy. So, we have finished the module 1, the week 1 with our 5 lectures, initial lectures on the energy economics and we have introduced ourselves to the whole domain of bioenergy. So, today we will be starting the module 2, the week 2. So, where the thrust area will be the biomass production and the different kind of biomass. The biomass production on the floor of earth, whether it is in the water bodies, whether it is in the ocean floor, whether it is in the land, wheresoever is governed by the process of photosynthesis as we have discussed in the module 1. So, these 5 lectures what we will be dealing with, we will be talking about this fundamental reaction of photosynthesis and how photosynthetic efficiency can be improved and uh, what are the different research areas which are flourishing in order to understand this process. So, overall if you have to understand photosynthesis as I have mentioned in the module 1, I am just reiterating it just to give you a recap. It is a process, it is a as it says photo means light and synthesis means manufacturing. It is a process of manufacturing food by using light and while using light the raw material or raw components which are converted into food are carbon dioxide which is abundant on earth and water. Essentially the reaction is basically carbon dioxide plus water making carbohydrate and the byproduct is oxygen. It is as simple as anything. So, though this uh, reaction looks very deceptively simple, we will come to this all these things just giving, an, giving you an overview. The apparatus and the process is being carried out by series of proteins and small molecules and they are arranged in a structure of chloroplast where this whole thing happens in a amazingly beautiful manner. It is probably one of the most uh, advanced nano machines what one can think of which has been evolved by nature through billions of years of evolution. So, to start off the lecture today, I will just show you a simple video where you will see on the water bodies the sunlight is falling and uh, that is leading to that the biomass and the biomass is kind of flourishing all over the water body that will kind of give you a feel that uh, why this kind of reactions have kind of you know called the attention of mankind for so long. So, let me just uh, put the video in front of you kind of give you an idea. So, you see a biomass in the center, center of the water somewhere okay, and the sun rays are falling as you could see you know you will see that they are hopping the light dots are kind of in a changing positions. If you look at it carefully along the edges of the leaves, it is just to kind of help you to kind of get a feel of the whole thing that uh, exactly something like that is happening when the light falls on the leaves. So, the leaf is actually acting as a solar panel. On this solar panel, the lights are falling and sun light is being trapped and that solar energy in the presence of water and carbon dioxide is converting it into carbohydrate. So, this is in the most simplistic way and just to kind of give you a visualization, I am just showing you this video. Okay. Now, from here we will move on to the lecture. So, to start off with, so we are into this will be our lecture 6 and this is our module 2, 
module 2 is lecture 1 of course, and in sum total this is the lecture 6 and the section what we will be dealing with is basic biomass technology production. So, biomass production, biomass technology and biomass resources, what are the different resources. So, the most critical among all these things to is to understand the biomass production process. This is what we will be dealing significantly in the next 4 or 5 lectures, what we will be dealing out here. So, in terms of the biomass production, the critical area will be photosynthesis. So, while we will be talking about photosynthesis, there will be two phases we will be dealing with. Today, I will give you an overall outline or the roadmap of photosynthesis. As we did in the previous module, where at the end of the lecture, I talked about the roadmap. Here, I will start with the roadmap, because it is a fairly complex reaction. So, unless we divide it into different components, it is really difficult to follow. Okay? So, after the road map, one by one, next three lectures, we will go one by one, exploring each one of the components and at the end, again we will integrate the whole road map, but by that time, you will be wise enough to understand where it all fits in the global scheme of things and where the futuristic research is going on. So, coming back to start off with our, coming back to the slide. Okay. So, so, basic reaction as I was telling you is very deceptively simple. So, the basic reaction is water plus CO2 forming CH2O, which is your carbohydrate and as a byproduct as oxygen. And this is your carbohydrate. And here you have the water. So, it is interesting to note, and all these have taken place over the oxygen, what you see out here actually comes from the water. So, and this whole thing. <coughs> And, and if you see out here, there is another reaction which is taking place out here, which is carbon dioxide is getting reduced to carbohydrates. Okay? And out here, H 2 O is getting oxidized and getting rid of the oxygen. So, oxygen is getting removed from out from here. Okay. So, now, if you look at this whole thing, this whole stuff is all happening inside one organelle called chloroplast. Or actually, I would say you can term this as, in other words, here what you are happening instead of you should not use this word, you should use splitting of water. Okay. And a splitting of water is generating will come why I am writing an electron and an oxygen out here. Okay. So now this whole thing is happening inside the chloroplast, which essentially is called as energy conversion apparatus. So, talking about chloroplast, so <laughs> as I told you, this is one deceptively simple reaction and there are a lot of proteins this whole process of photosynthesis 
is carried out by series of proteins and small molecules. Series of proteins and small molecules. Okay. Now, <clears throat> if you look at the plant cell, so the plant cell kind of in this hexagonal structure, you have the cell wall like this. So, this is structural diameter is around, sorry, the cross section is around 30 micron, 30 to 35 micron. Okay. And within the plant cells, so you have the nucleus out here, having the DNA and all other components. But yet, there are some very small component like this lot of them which are present there, which are called chloroplast. Okay. So, chloroplast what we have just shown on the previous slide, chloroplast is the site where the photosynthetic reaction is taking place. So, evolutionary there are a lot of uh, debate over it, whether the plant cells which are formed whether they had chloroplast in the beginning or not. It has been postulated by different uh, evolutionary biologists. They say that chloroplast was an independent organelle at some point or other and it parasitized the plant and became part of the plant cell. The reason to say that is if you look at the chloroplast carefully, chloroplast also carries its own DNA in it just like the other organelle which is another energy transduction molecule which is the mitochondria MT. I am just showing in mitochondria which also carries its own DNA into it. Just like the chloroplast mitochondria also have its own DNA and there are a lot of uh, debate over it whether these were originally part of the cell plant cell or they have been inherited and under what conditions they have been inherited if at all they have been parasitized, not inherited is not the right word, they have been parasitized. Under what conditions they have been parasitized and how they have kind of became part of the plant, it is a long drawn mystery, we really do not know it, but it is believed to be like that. But what is important for us, if by the roll of dice that is something which has happened in nature, then this one translation has changed the course of our understanding or course of energy transduction. So, within this chloroplast, come back to this structure, within this chloroplast, so what happens essentially is the light falls out here and the reaction what we discussed in the previous page takes place out here, this oxygen. Now, in order for this reaction to take place, this particular structure, what do you see? It has a area of membrane, we will talk about this later in detail, probably in the next lecture. It has an area of membrane, which is stacked on its structure. Stacked over one another and it is called thylakoid membrane and we will talk about the detailed structure of the thylakoid membrane or the site where this energy transduction is taking place. So, before we get into the thylakoid membrane, let us understand certain things. So, the chloroplast contain a specific light trapping pigments called chlorophylls. 
they are arranged along on the thylakoid membrane. When the light falls, chlorophyll molecule absorbs a certain quanta of light and ejects an electron. This electron further travel through and reaches a particular reaction center. And from there, this electron does something very interesting. So, this is coming back to the slide, it is something like this. One second. Okay. No. So, the first step, so what I just now told you is something like this. The first step in photosynthesis is the absorption of light by chlorophyll. Okay? Absorption of light by chlorophyll. We will talk about the structure of the chlorophyll later which is essentially a porphyrin. And when we talk about the chlorophyll as a porphyrin complex, let me just give you another idea just to make you understand this whole thing. If you look at the hemoglobin, it is also a porphyrin complex with the iron in the center which gives it the red color. In the case of chlorophyll, there is a magnesium in the center which gives it a green color. And if you remove both of them, you remove the iron as well as the magne uh, magnesium. What will you get is the porphyrin complex itself has a yellow color and that is exactly what you see when the leaves becomes yellow. That is essentially it is chlorophyll molecules are getting damaged because of continuous exposure to light. So, they turn out to become yellow and so that is the situation where the magnesium moiety, once, once we will talk about the structure, the magnesium moiety is not present and because of the photo damage has been removed from the porphyrin molecule. Okay. Coming back to the slide, so which is essentially a porphyrin with a coordinated magnesium ion, the coordinated magnesium ion present at the center. The resulting electronic excitation so essentially it is something like that resulting electronic excitation <coughs> passes from one chlorophyll CHL, I am just putting one chlorophyll molecule to another chlorophyll molecule and so on and so forth and eventually it re reaches a chlorophyll which we call as the reaction center okay? until it reaches something and this chlorophyll is very special chlorophyll, special CHL which is also called the reaction center. And to your surprise, as of now, nobody can really tell by looking at a leaf and looking at the matrix of chlorophyll on the thylakoid membrane, topographically, which is the reaction center. So, it is something like that. Just try to visualize. I am just drawing it. Okay, so, so, for example, this is where all the chlorophyll molecules are present, CHL. Each one of them is a chlorophyll molecule, okay. CHL, CHL, CHL. CHL, CHL, okay. Okay, now say for example light is falling. So light falls here. So the excitation passes, excitation passes, excitation passes, and maybe somewhere out here, this one, the one which I am putting a pink. So now no one can say with certainty that this is the reaction center or that is the reaction center we really do not know and we will talk later that how these reaction centers were discovered. Okay. So, coming back to the slide, 
So, it reaches to the reaction center which I have shown you like this. Okay. So, reaction center and at such reaction center there is something essentially happening. At the reaction center at at such uh, R x is the reaction center, okay. at such a reaction center, what is happening is excited electron, the energy of the excited electron energy of the excited electron is converted and be careful at this point converted into a separation of charge separation of charge and in essence, what does this mean? So, here the key word or key letter is this separation of charge and in essence, the separation of charge is the one which generates the what we call as the reducing potential. In essence, what we are doing is that we are using light energy is used to create the separation of charge. So, by and large, this is the most critical reaction in photosynthesis where the light energy falls on the chlorophyll molecule and it ejects an electron. But just think something differently. Now, total number of chlorophyll molecule is finite. Say for example, just for the understanding sake, I say there are 10,000 molecules. So, at any point after 10,000 molecules get excited, it will get damaged. So, eventually what will happen? The very moment you are losing an electron, you are getting oxidized. So, unless otherwise I donate you an electron, you will not be able to come back to your ground state. Try to understand. So, let me just uh, go to the next slide. Say for example, this is a chlorophyll molecule. So, light falls on it and it ejects an electron okay? and just assume that this is the reaction center one. Okay? irrespective of that. So, once the electron goes out of it, what is happening? This chlorophyll molecule is now at a different state. It is in, it is, it is something like this. It is devoid of an electron. So, this chlorophyll has got oxidized. Now, in this oxidized state, this chlorophyll molecule will get damaged unless from some way or other, we support or we throw another electron from some other source which will be sent out here, which will bring back to its ground state. So, you realize that for such a reaction to proceed for a prolonged period of time, we will be needing a perennial source of electron. And as a matter of fact, the global potential difference which is created is nothing but a gradient created across any forms of life by one perennial source. Then who is that perennial source? So, keep this in mind. Now, what I will do? I will put the road map in front of you that where each one of these components fit. Okay? So, moving to the next slide. So, we talked about the structure of the chloroplast. So, there will be two, three terminologies which will come to you and do not get scared. We will go one by one. There is a terminology which will come as photosystem 1 
there will be another terminology called photosynthesis system 2. So, when you talked about photosystem 1 and photosystem 2, just for your visualization. So, I showed you one picture just before in one of the slides, let me go back to the slide. So, I showed you this picture. So, imagine out of this, just I am adding one more A, some of the chlorophyll are sitting at physically at a different point. Say for example, the one with the green I mentioned okay. and I kind of draw a line like this and other chlorophyll which I am now putting them uh, in with a dark blue border, they are sitting at a different site. Okay. So, imagine on a membrane, there are two colonies of chlorophyll molecule sitting at different point and those two different points, what we call as photosystem 1 and what we call as photosystem 2. So, I will close in here with this and we will take up each part of it in our subsequent lectures. Thank you.